All right. Hey, folks, I want to share with you today how I created the weathering on these water tanks here. Um, these are actually both the same tank, just printed at different uh, scales, uh, different proportions. Um, and I've printed and, and sold these tanks, you know, over time. And uh, I had another customer order one uh, a couple days ago. So I figured now is a good time to do a video actually on how I did it. So once I get it off the printer and I dip it in the IPA right here, this is how it looks when it comes right off the printer. Uh, it's just resin gray and we're going to remove it from the build plate, take the supports off. You can see I've got some drain holes on there. This is a hollow tank. That is important to have more than one drain hole on your hollow piece. You can see another uh, hollowing hole on the bottom uh, that acts as a vent and a drain hole at the same time. So that there's no resin left inside when you go to uh, plug the holes and and uh, paint over them and stuff like that. So the water here is just an easier way for me to remove the supports uh, a little quicker and uh, not leave behind any you know real damaging marks. I, though I do you know give it a sand and stuff like that with a with a sander to clean it up. But uh, the water help warm water helps remove the supports. Uh, more easily so anyway we'll get this all dried off run it through the cure machine do a light sand on it and let's start painting it <laughs> now the gopro did something weird here it just totally sped this up uh, that's what happens when you push the button and you're not looking at what button you pushed on the gopro <laughs> but all i'm doing here is i'm laying down a base coat of white vallejo primer uh, you always want to primer before you paint here we got some distilled water. I'm going to mix in a little bit of this um, cool blue gray from Apple Barrel. Now I tell you, you know, say what you want, but I like airbrushing with Apple Barrel paints. They go on so matte. I mean, totally dull, and I love that. Um, but the base coat of primer is what really helps these paints stick to the model. So um, I'm just going to mix it up here with a little distilled water. You saw me shoot a little bit of distilled water into the medicine cup there. And we'll give it a good mix thoroughly because the apple barrel paints do come fairly clumpy uh, out of the bottle. And they do require a bit of reducing for sure. And I only reduce it with distilled water. Uh, it's It's... They're acrylic paints. They're made with water, so I reduce it with water. No need in spending any money on reducers. It's It'd be kind of nonsense. The only thing that you do need to watch out for is the fact that the Apple Barrel paints dry quickly on the tip. Keep a wet Q-tip on hand, uh, and that's easy. Easy fix. So you can see the paint's flowing real good here, man. I'm just going to town, uh, laying down some light coats, that I build on top of each other until everything's a pretty consistent shade of this particular color gray. Now, I do I do mix a gray and a blue sometimes together to give me an old sort of old steel look. I didn't do it in this case. You can see the blue there on the table. I added that last. And the reason I did that this time is, is because I was lazy. <laughs> but what I'm really going to do here though is to to cool this gray down a bit uh, i'm going to first mix some of it up with distilled water but i'm going to lightly and from a distance just uh powdery kind of you know let this blue fall onto the uh, mist it on from a distance with the airbrush i'm not going to paint it up close and with heavy coats i'm just going to lightly let it fall over the top of the water heater to sort of knock back the new gray look and kind of give it a little bit of blue on top to kind of look like it's kind of an old metal, an old iron or something. This isn't a water heater first. I should say that too. This isn't a water heater. This is like an old water boiler. It's a difference. Uh, so at any rate, here we are, you know, just back from a distance and just kind of you know, letting, now this is a high water evolution. So the paint comes out pretty quick. If you pull the trigger all the way back, it's got a pretty big nozzle on there. And I like that for, for stuff like this. But like I say, we're just knocking the, the, the gray back, the intensity of the gray back a bit with a little bit of blue on top. It's not really a noticeable blue, but it makes it noticeably different from the gray that was originally painted on there. Now we're going to mix up some of the apple barrel white with some distilled water. And I'm going to knock all that back a little bit and make it look a little 
faded. That's the goal of this here. And I just, I always do this in a mixing cup, uh, especially with the apple barrel paints. You, you can probably get away with mixing other paints in the paint cup of the airbrush, but apple barrel paints can come out pretty clumpy and they require a lot of stirring once you put the water in there. Uh, so I do it in the mixing cup. It's just a lot. It makes the whole process a, a lot funner. A lot less of a headache. So we're going to, once again, lightly from a distance, just mist this white on and knock it all back down a bit in random spots and, you know, heavier spots and, you know, a heavier application in some areas, lighter application in other areas. Just knocking it back, making it not look so vibrant and spinning it around on the little turntable. I love airbrushing, man. And these Apple Barrel paints, they do airbrush once you get them reduced down to the right consistency, they airbrush fine. You know, just knock them down with some distilled water and and uh, build your coats up. They do much better over a coat of primer. Absolutely. So in my impatience, I get out the heat gun and we dry that up really quickly. But look how matte that finish is. It's just a total matte, flat, dull finish. I would love that. Uh, so before the next step here, I... Went over this with some Mod Podge aerosol. I don't want these acrylic paints to begin to wash off or to become sort of rehydrated uh, with the next step that I'm going to do, which is doing a stippled black wash to add a little bit of textured look to the tank. So since I'm adding water on top of water-based paints, I want to make sure I've got a sealed coat on there between, between the two types of applications. So that's what I'm doing here. And I start with a really light mixture of black wash and I'll go darker from, from there as, as I need to. But you can see I've got two pieces of sponge here. One sponge is gonna stay dry, the other sponge is going to be dipped in there and wrung out till it's almost dry, but it's got enough wash left in there to leave some patterning on the tank here. The dry sponge, you'll see what I do with that in a minute. If I get a little too crazy with it and there's a little bit too much water on the, or the marks are a little too intense, I can knock it back with the dry sponge. And that's why I keep two types of sponge there. Um, this is a big poured sponge too, uh, a really wide poured sponge. So it creates a nice big texture that would make it look like there was some, maybe some pock marking or some ring marks or, you know, just different random patterns to help create the idea that there's some texture going on here and some different uh, weathering effects. And there's no real right way to do this. It's really all just a matter of preference and how it looks to you. You know, and that's, I think some people probably get caught up on the fact where, you know, that it needs to look a certain way or, you know, but it, it really... It, it, it's really this the thing about this is it's totally up to you man this is nobody is in control of this but me <laughs> if, you know and and it's all up to me man this is all my choice and if you do this it's all your choice so as long as you can get a process that's repeatable and consistent how it ends up is totally up to you as far as the way it ultimately looks you know so you can see these patterns being left here by the sponge and I'll just I won't hit the whole boiler with it I'll just do random spots once again I'm you know I, I want the blue to show through I don't want to cover up the paint I just put on there so we keep it light keep it moving build up the textures from lighter to darker uh, you know in different areas as I want to lay down all these different layers and that's what makes my stuff in my opinion look pretty cool there's just a lot of layers to it at the end of the day you know does it take me quite a few hours to make one of these tanks that I sell for 60 bucks. Yes, it does. <laughs> it's a good thing I don't charge by the hour, but, but at the end of the day too, the customer gets something that's really cool. And, and I know that, that it's got a lot of really cool layers and a lot of buildup and a lot of texture. And that's what attracted them to wanting to buy this piece anyway. And so, you know, it's, it's a bit of a labor of love, but it does, you know, pay for itself. And I want to create good looking stuff. Uh, I don't want to be cheap and, and just get stuff out here. We're using some pigments. I got sidetracked <laughs> here. We're using some pigments. These are soft chalk pastels that I grind up in a Nutribullet 
much less expensive. You get a whole lot more and a whole lot more variety of color using soft chalk pastels than some of the more popular pigment products that are out there, though I do have those also. I love these soft chalk pastels. And when you mix these with I, uh, IPA alcohol, man, you got a, a combination that is going to allow you to create some awesome weathering and aging and some really nice powdery look to the piece here. And, and that's what I do is in a medicine cup, I'll squirt some IPA into the medicine cup and then I'll paint these pigments on. I'll dip my brush in the IPA, then I'll dip it in the pigment, then I'll brush it on. So here we go, a little IPA in there. Then I'll, now that I've got my blacks down pretty much where I want them with the pigments, I'm going to go through and start adding the rust colors. And I'll do that by dipping it in the IPA. And, and we'll go through here and we'll just make some basic outlines in the shapes where I think I want the rust to start. Uh, you know, being introduced onto the, the piece here. I want it to drip down from the top a bit, from the bolts that are there, from the control boxes at the bottom. And I'm not really worried about the, 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 the look or the fade or the, you know, any, any of that stuff right now. I'm just worried about the shape of the overall drips and stuff like that so that's what i'm doing now i'm just putting on the basic shape of everything and the color that i want and i start out with this dark brown and i'll make that my whitest base and then i'll go back through later and paint with the same method more vibrant rust colors oranges or you know darker and lighter oranges on top of the browns so that there's once again those layers going on there so here we're just working with the alcohol and moving the pigments around in the shape that I want, dripping it down. Uh, you know, the alcohol dries really quick and it's awesome because you can really just have a good time with this, man. It's really, really fun. And once again, let me remind though, if I didn't have that base coat of, uh, or that other coat of, aerosol mod podge or whatever type of aerosol sealant you want over the top of that paint this alcohol would take that acrylic paint right up so uh, it's really important to make sure that it's sealed before you move on to this step but here you can see man it looks crappy but we're working out the shape of the first color of rust to go down that's all we're interested in here is just just the shape of it and you can see my little brush stippling away if you don't like the shape of it, and once it dries, add a little bit more alcohol on the brush, rework it. Now, here's a trick. I take the IPA bottle, and I take the, the water heater or the boiler, and I spray one big mist of spray over the top of it, and that dampens down that top rust that I laid down. You can see on the top there. It dampened that down, gave it a softer look, gave it a more organic look to it, and sort of... Uh, softened up the hard edges left behind by the brush so that's an awesome trick not only does it it uh, you just mist it on over the whole piece right there and it dries really quick and you're left behind a really cool looking uh, bit of uh, rusty drip <laughs> now we're just going in with some the same color brown and i'm just stippling i'm going in there around the nooks and crannies of these little control boxes and and here I didn't think about it. I, I should have painted those first. You'll see I paint them later. It's no big deal. I'll just go back through and rust the rust it again. But same thing here. You're just getting in there with the sponge, stippling it with the alcohol, and uh, making some really cool nook and cranny type buildup over the, the uh, control boxes down to the bottom. Now, I'm going to dip this sponge in IPA also. Dip it in the color that I want. And just stipple it in shapes and patterns along the base of the water boiler here. Now you can see the the initial part that I laid down went on thick and clumpy. I don't mind the thick and clumpy. I don't like the shape of that one. So we're going to knock that back here in a little bit by using the spray bottle, spraying the IPA on there, and then going back through with the dry sponge and rocking 
and just sort of blending that clump away until it's in a shape and an intensity that I'm that I'm happier with. So don't think that, oh, it's dry. I can't do anything else with it. Man, I ruined it. Just spray a little more alcohol on there. Uh, I go through a lot of alcohol. <laughs> Here we go. I'll spray it and we're going to rework that orange clump, that initial bunch that I laid down. Uh, well, let me, well, I'll rotate to it here in a minute, but, uh, it, the, the alcohol just is, is a great trick, man. And, and I know that you can use more popular brand name pigments and a thinner that they sell. And I have that stuff also, but this is just a much, I, I love this way. So here we're going to rework that orange clump. I didn't like it. You can see I'm rotating my sponge. I'm dragging it up, rotating the sponge, dampening it back, knocking it back a little bit. You've got a little bit of work time there, not much, but now I'm getting a much happier shape out of it and, a, and an intensity that is a little bit more believable for random bits of rust forming on this water boiler. And so, you know, it's just a matter of, of dabbing and stippling and, you know, having your sponges on hand and knowing the process, you know, uh, this is a fun process and it's just alcohol and soft chalk pastels. And here we go again. See, I'll just spray that right on there, man. And it just knocks it all back down and helps me, helps me rework those areas. It's fun, I'm telling you, man. It's a good time. Uh, it's a good time. And see, look at that. Coming, coming along real nice from a gray, <laughs> boring tank that came out of a, a resin printer. You know, we're making some progress on this, no doubt. I've got a bunch of different brushes there. I just use them for different things. Small brushes to get in small areas, bigger brushes to get in bigger areas, dry brushes for dusting off excess. You know, I always have quite a few different size brushes on hand and a few different pieces of sponge. It's just really helpful. I'm gonna go back through with this lighter orange, like I say, and rework over the top of the brown just to have those layers once again that that I, I talk about a lot. You've got your dark, you start out with your darks, that's your old rust. Then you got new rust forming on top of the old rust and that drips down and that's a lighter color. And so it just helps create all these layers. That little, that little air blaster you saw me use, I'll tell you what, I bought that on Amazon and that helps me dry the alcohol even much quicker. But, but <sighs> look at that, man, I'm making a mess. But I'll tell you, uh, that little air blaster is, a replacement for all that canned air that I used to buy. Um, much better alternative, rechargeable. It's like 40 bucks. Spray out your keyboards with it, your computers, and you can use it to dry alcohol like this. Uh, but anyway, giving up all kinds of information here. <laughs> so you can see I painted. I came back and I painted the silver stacking and I painted the base down there at the control units uh, and the, the pilot light uh, cover down there. <laughs> <laughs> I should do that in the beginning, but sometimes I get ahead of myself. But with the rust, it doesn't matter because it's you're gonna you can paint right over the top of it, and it's gonna look even better if you paint right over the top of the textured pigments that you lay down. Then it's gonna look like the rust is bubbling from under the paint. So you can't lose, man. <laughs> you can't lose. It's uh you know it's just it's gonna come out good. So, you know, uh, now that I've got that painted, it, it looks a little bit too intense, though, and too new compared to the rest of the boiler. So I've got to knock it back. Once again, I dab the brush in the alcohol and I sort of create a wash with the black pigment and the alcohol, creating lighter and darker intensities across the face of that silver paint that I just put down. I'm going to dry it with the air tool here. And then if I think it's too dark, I'll just add a little bit more alcohol on top of the brush and not rubbing too much because at some point you'll begin to go down to the base coat, but, but, um, you know, just keeping it uh, real light, a little alcohol in there, getting some brown in those crevices. Just really, you know, this is, a uh, the same process just, you know, done in different ways over different parts of the, the water heater. It's, washes with alcohol it's different color pigments it's stippling with a sponge uh, this isn't this isn't hard to do and sometimes i think people look at this and when they tell me oh man your rust this or that it looks so good you know i mean it the only thing about this is it takes time it's not 
it's not difficult at all you just got to be brave man and just start doing it you know um and there's lots of other products on the market that you can buy that like make instant rust on your models and stuff like that i you know um this is the way i do it and i and i dig it i have total control over all the different layers and colors and intensities and i get to make a mess with it you know and <laughs> sometimes it comes out looking good <laughs> back to the alcohol and the sponge in a different color now and we'll just hit random parts of the tank just to make it look like there's rust in different spots and knocking back a little bit of that blue space on there and filling that in with a little bit of weathering also hitting the bolts on that pilot light cover down there and let's spray a little alcohol on it knock it back with the sponge if it's too intense and I want to spread it out a little bit and and change the shape of it see that that's all it is and I'm spraying alcohol right on this so it's there's no secret here you know this is a, a spray bottle filled with like 90 what is it 91 or something ipa and and it dries really quick and it leaves behind a, a really great looking matte soft sort of finish to the pigments that go on and it seals them that those those pigments won't come off of there once that alcohol hits them they're they're not gonna come off you know and then you hit this at the end with a little mod podge sealer or your krylon sealer or whatever it is you like to use and this those things that stuff's not going anywhere it's on there <laughs> spray a little air on there and we keep it moving and honestly we're just about done there's i'm gonna go through and i'm gonna do this is a textured product from ak terrains i like using this because it gives another layer of depth or detail or feel or visual uh, something for your eyes to lock on to. It's just a textured product that you can stipple on. Sometimes I add a little water to it and I stipple it on there with a, the end of a paintbrush. I'll stipple it on with a sponge. Uh, you can reduce it down with water and it just adds a grit and a texture to the product that gives it a, a little more believable look of, you know, rust in some areas as opposed to just colored rust, but a textured rust. And so that's always helpful to, to mix up the the types of uh, rust or types of texture that you're adding on to your piece like in this boiler here I'll I'll stipple on colors and I'll stipple on and I'll fan them out and I'll you know I'll sort of blend them out but then I'll leave them clumpy in some spots too and then uh, I'll add a, a product like this on top of that to even further the the randomness of the texturing and the and, and the appearance of the piece it just lots of different you know tools and products and and things to to help add to the the overall look of it just a lot of layers in there and that's really what i like doing is a lot of layers it takes a while it definitely does take a while and when you know you spend five hours you know actually this print took this this was a 15 hour print okay <laughs> then then there's the alcohol uh to to clean it then there's you know the cure time then there's probably another you know all the airbrush time the primer the airbrush painting all all the things that go into making this piece probably took a total of not counting the print time probably took me another three or, or four hours to do uh so you definitely don't get your money back when you sell this stuff, but it's it's fun. This is another product, Streaking Grind from AK Terrains. And this is a way that you can add some streaking and some griming to your to your model. It's once again I'm just putting it on here in the basic shape that I want. I'm not really worried about the intensity of it or the the, the darkness of it, uh, how thick it is. We'll get it on in the shape that we want. And I'll hit it with this air blaster to dry it up just a little bit. Because this stuff streaks better the drier that it is. That's a mineral, that's a spirits uh, to help wipe it down, sort of like a paint thinner. So we'll, dr we'll dry this up. Make sure it's not still wet when we go to do this step because it works 
like I say, better the drier that it is. I'll dip my paintbrush in that little mineral spirit. And then I'll dab the excess off on a paper towel and I'll just sort of drag it through the initial shapes that I laid down to sort of drag it out and change the shape, just work the shape like I did with the pigments and the, and the IPA alcohol. I'm just, now that I've got the basic shape laid down, I'm just going to rework it with a smaller brush and some of these spirits here, drag it out, change the shape, change the length. And you can work some areas more than others to lighten it up and go from darker to lighter as the drip would go down the side of the boiler. Then I'll grab a sponge, <laughs> another piece of sponge, and I'll do the same thing. I'll dip that in the, I, uh, in the mineral spirits and knock the excess off on a towel. And then I'll just go through that. Look what, look what this does. Look at this. It just totally changes the shape of that up, man. It just blends it all in there. So awesome. That's a great product. And that bottle will last for years. <laughs> I've had that bottle probably for three years. It only takes a little bit, at least in the way that I use it. It only takes a little bit. And, and uh, it just goes a long way, man. And it just adds another layer of believable, grimy, drippy streakiness to this water boiler <laughs> you know but at any rate there's so many different ways to do this stuff so many different approaches as long as you have some a process that that is repeatable and you can turn out consistent results with it then that's a winning that's a winning process man i don't like to just wind up with something i like to have a process in my mind and a method to get me to where i'm going that i can repeat uh, with minor variable, you know, between, you know, between each finished products. But anyway, let's take a look at this on the video and I'll show you how it came out. Uh, what am I doing? Oh, putting a little bit more. <laughs> I'm putting a little bit more AK terrains on the bottom with the sponge and throughout the body. <laughs> I probably decided that it, it needed more uh, texture in there. So anyway, then I sealed that up with a Mod Podge. But here's what it looks like, man. If you haven't done so, like and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate everybody watching and and tuning in, man, and sharing all your stuff with me on Instagram. And you know, it's uh, it's it's a great community to be a part of. And I appreciate everybody following me on TikTok, Instagram, insightful underscore imagery. Also, my website insightfulimagery.com. I sell tanks just like this, STL files for the tanks, lots of props, lots of cool stuff, man. Anyway, till the next video. I appreciate everybody watching and. Take care.